What's going on guys? Welcome back. Crazy for KV's RC. I'm Tim. Welcome back to my channel. So we're on part two of the RC Speedy A1 chassis and uh, build that I'm doing. You guys saw in the previous video. If you haven't seen it, I'm going to link it up here. Um, go back, check it out. I kind of, you know, show you my first impressions of the A1 and what options I decided to go with. I do recommend going back and watching that video. Um, it's going to be a lot more in depth, but quick recap. Um, we got a uh, RC Speedy A1 and get it right off his website and uh, I opted for a gray coating and black panels. Um, decided to do it a little bit different, not the uh, uh, raw titanium like I had on the C3. This one is in titanium, weighs about 13 ounces uh, without the panels on it. So pretty lightweight, much more performance oriented than that C3. I also got a fuel cell, um, some window netting, and it also came with a small little battery mount, Velcro for that, um, two brackets for standard size servos. You can decide to do minis if you want. I just decided to do standard. Um, I had a few um, standard servos that I was wanting to use for this build already, so this is what I went with. And then the nice thing about this is they actually came with the small little links that you're gonna have to use for those accessory servos. All right, so you're all caught up. Um, that's pretty much where I've been at. Um, wanted to start working on this, you know, get the next video out, but went to an RC event this past weekend. Uh, went to Wet n Wild, Georgia Rock Zombies in Columbus, Georgia. Awesome event. Um, only one day, those one day events go quick. Um, pretty busy, you know, a lot of small little fun things going on, but it was great to see everybody and uh, I had a great time. Did not film very much, so definitely not enough to do a video on. Maybe I'll uh, put some pictures on my Instagram. But I mentioned in the first video on this series that I pretty much had everything ready to go, and this is kind of what I mean by it. So we'll start with the front axle. It's got the links already built, um, mounted up to it. I decided to go with Vanquish's outer portal covers, um, brass. These are very heavy. If you've ever built a Vanquish portal kit, you know that you actually get brass axle sleeves. Um, Beef Tubes is kind of like the, the name brand and axle sleeves, but Vanquish included them. So this, is, this has got some really good weight to it. But that one's ready to go. Additionally, standard rear portal axle off of Phoenix portal kit. Ready to go with the four link. And I also have the transmission already as well. And you'll notice, uh, we'll just transition into electronics from here. Um, I have a Fusion Pro in there. So in order to get a Fusion Pro in here, you do have to shave a little bit off this upper link mount, um, just right here. It's very slight, a millimeter, maybe a millimeter and a half. I'm not really worried about it affecting the strength. Um, the screw can still go all the way through. It's not gonna hit the motor. It's just uh, ever so slightly um, a little bit too long. But I really wanted to go with this because of the simplicity of an all-in-one and not needing to find a place to mount my ESC. So for servo, we're gonna go with the Shifts RC X2. You can tell Shifts by their wild graffiti um, cases that they do. This is a direct power servo, 3S Max, which is why I paired it up with this. I had a few servos kind of laying around um that i bought for a few projects that are coming and this one kind of made the most sense for the a1 given that i'm running a fusion and that's also a 3s max system on 3s the shifts x2 i think is just over 700 ounce inches you know on a full fully charged 3s 12.6 volts um plenty fast so that should be plenty to get the job done so i can use the same 3s battery probably like an 850 maybe a 650 pack and be able to power the servo and the motor ESC all in one. So you guys have noticed uh, a trend here probably when it comes to you know accessory servos or kind of budget builds. Um, I love the EcoPower servos. This is their 115T. It's their low profile, um, high voltage servo. It's got metal gears in it. It's right at about 200 ounce inches at 7.4 volts. It's really lightweight, which is uh, one of the reasons I chose it for this. It does have a plastic casing, so that kind of helps with it. Um, that uh, 
The Fusion Pro, you can turn the BEC up to 7.4, so I do intend to do that. If you look on A-Main's website, it'll actually advertise that this is an 8.4 capable uh, servo, but on the box it says 7.4. Um, it makes me wonder if uh, 8.4 would be all right on this. I know I ran it for a little bit on 8 volts on the C3, but if you remember, I actually had issues with endpoints on a dig servo that um, ended up cooking one of these. So probably not a voltage issue, probably just an endpoint problem, but we're definitely just going to play it safe, and the Fusion will only go to 7.4 anyway, so should be plenty. The internal BEC on that, will definitely be plenty for this. So let's talk about shocks. Um, this is one thing I kinda need to figure out as I'm bolting things together. Obviously I bought a Phoenix Portal kit for this build. Um, so it does come with 80 millimeter SAD shocks. They look great, the cap is internal, so it doesn't you know, have a big external threaded cap. Um, I do plan to run these springless, so it'll be running in full droop. There's no fluid in here right now. Um, but basically I just need to figure out if these are going to be long enough and give me the travel that I want or am I going to want to switch over to the 90 mils they make just to give myself a little more travel. Um, they do make uh, shock end you know, adjustments where I could go plus 5 millimeter on this. They do make uh, like plus 5 and minus 5 rod ends or uh, shock ends for those. Um, real cheap you know, $5 part but um, I'm not sure if that's the way I want to do it because that's really just for, you know, adjusting your ride height. Um, and this is going to be pretty much slammed. So I want it to be as low as possible, um, you know, at normal ride height. And when it articulates, it has the most shock travel possible while not, you know, getting away from itself. So we may go to 90s. We might stay with these for now. But that's something that I am kind of considering and thinking about already. Okay, so to round out what I'm putting on this, um, I've already got them built. Uh, wheel tire combo. What I ended up going with was Vanquish's VXT 2s. Um, incredibly sticky. Uh, when they come out of the package, it's kind of hard to get them off the plastic. Um, really, really soft compound. It's definitely a comp oriented compound. I'd say pretty comparable to a uh, Proline Predator, maybe not quite as soft. Um, there's some really good like siping in these seems like a really good tread pattern. The nice thing about these is um, They are advertised at 4.75 but uh, Once mounted up there about the 5 inch mark So these are going to kind of hold its place until I can get uh, some cut and shuts from Logan over at West Desert Wheeler probably just going to do BFG crawlers and G8 compound, but those will be 5.25 and I think that's going to be the perfect size for this truck. The wheels and these are from Vanquish as well. They're bullies, they're in gray, and then I've got some silver uh, OMF phase five beadlock rings on there, and I think it looks pretty good. Um, decided not to go with scale hardware. Uh, I want this to be as high performing as possible, and sometimes the scale hardware um, kind of protrudes a little bit from this beadlock ring, and if you get like a real hard sidewall if you get the tire kind of stuck against the sidewall, that scale hardware will want to catch rocks and uh, kind of in impede your performance a little bit. So we went with the regular included hardware, saved a little bit of money doing that as well. And I'm pretty excited. I, I like the way they look. I like the, the gray and silver kind of match the theme of the truck, um, especially once you tie in, you know, the silver shocks that we're going to run and then the gray and black um, on the truck as well. But yeah, that catches you guys up kind of where I'm at. Um, just kind of like piecing things together. Like I said, you guys probably saw I have the panels on the truck. Um, you know, just a couple of screws in each one. Just to see how it was going to look with this color combo. I like it. Um, I think we're going to run it just plain for a little while. And then I may end up doing some sort of uh, paint job on the panels. We'll see. If I do decide to run some Lexan panels, it would help shave a little bit of weight. Not much. Uh, it's real... Thin gauge aluminum, uh, pretty flexible kind of molds to the uh, contour of the cage. But um, yeah, it is, uh, it's something to think about and a way that we might be able to bump the performance just a little bit. I'm really excited for this build. Uh, I was kind of thinking about it, you know, while I was at the event, 
Um, I was having a blast, but I was like, man, I can make a lot of progress on this while I was gone. So I'm really excited to get back to it and uh, kind of start putting things together. Shouldn't be too bad. Um, a lot of the stuff when you when it comes to like an RC Speedy cage is just figuring out hardware and spacers and things like that. Um, it doesn't come with any instructions, so there's a little bit of you know figuring, but it's pretty much plug and play, especially with the Phoenix kit. I've kind of looked at the skid. It there's no spacers required for the skid like there was on the C3. Um, it looks like it's going to be like a very aggressive truck you know, kind of like a stretched um, moon buggy style. And I think it's gonna do really well, especially with some bigger tires than 475 on there and some serious overdrive. Yeah, I'm, I'm super pumped about this, ready to get, you know, wrenching, actually start putting parts on it. Shouldn't take me very long to get it figured out. Um, I kind of messed a little bit with the servo. Uh, I talked in the first video and I've seen some stuff online about getting a servo in there being uh, quite a chore. Um, stay tuned in the next video I'm gonna kind of catch you guys up um, you know we'll kind of do like a build progression video and I'm actually gonna show you how to get the servo in one of these there's a little bit of a trick uh, you gotta kind of contort it but it goes in relatively easy and I think it's just a patience thing so stay tuned and uh, the next video should be out very soon and I'll see you guys then thanks